Welcome to the second lecture of Biostatistic Lecture Series. In the previous lecture, I gave you an introduction to statistics. In this lecture, I am going to talk about variability and variables. So, what are variables? You may like ice cream than chocolate. You may prefer white color dresses than black color dresses. You may prefer to take medicine from Dr. X than Dr. Y. You may prefer taller people than shorter people. You may prefer traveling hill countryside than going into seaside. In your day-to-day -day life, everything you do, food, dresses, traveling, you prefer something over something. That is what is called variability. You may think that everything under the sun, everything in the universe is a part of variable or part of variability. But I must mention that it is not. There are two types of things in statistics. Variables and constants. Everything as I mentioned are variables, but there are constants which are not changing over the time. You may wonder what are the things that will not change over the time. I will give you an example. Density of water. Density of food. It's a universal constant. Variability. So, what is variability? The phenomena of changing the quantity or quality from one observation to another observation is known as variability. Over the time, statistics focused only on quantity, but now we are interested in quality as well. So, how do you categorize variables? The major method of categorizing variables is qualitative and quantitative. If the variability is existing quality-wise, we call that variable as a qualitative variable. For example, cars, colors, Anything that changes from one observation to another observation based on quality. If the variability exists in quantity, we call that as a quantitative variable. For example, height, weight, temperature. Another method of categorizing variables is discrete and continuous. That is the most important categorization in statistics. If you clearly know what is discrete and what is continuous, that will be the initial point of understanding statistics very well. In any variable, we have the smallest value and the largest value. So, this is the smallest value, this is the largest value of a discrete distribution. This is the smallest value of a continuous distribution and this is the largest value of a continuous distribution. We will get an example. If there are finite number of possibilities or fixed number of possibilities are there, between the smallest value and the largest value, we call that as a discrete distribution. So we have only fixed number of possibilities. For example, number of children in a class, number of patients in a hospital. So we can't have half patients. We can't have half numbers. 30 children in a class. 31 children in a class, 50 children in a class, 40 children in a class. So we can't have 39.5 students in a class. But in a continuous variable, anything within the smallest value and the largest value is possible. Example, height, 
weight, we can have a height of 157.1234. Any number, any decimal point is possible. We call this type of variable as a continuous variable. So we call that these are infinite populations and these are finite populations. So discrete, finite population, continuous, infinite population. In general, most of the discrete distributions follow skewed distributions, either negatively skewed or positively skewed. These distributions are not normal. Discrete generally follow skewed distributions. But if the sample size is so high, we can expect a normal distribution. Continuous distribution. Most of the continuous distributions which are naturally occurring, we can call them as normal distributions. It will be a symmetric distribution. But of course, there are many continuous distributions which do not follow normal distributions. You need to understand this. We choose the best statistical test based on the type of distribution. Based on the scale that we use to measure the values of distribution, we have another categorization. We have four types of scales, namely I would like to go from bottom to top, nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio. In nominal scale, each value has its own name. Example, cars, blue cars, red cars, yellow cars, white cars, like that. Every value has a name. We call that those values are mutually exclusive. What do you mean by mutually exclusive? That means they are independent from each other. Example, Blue cars do not depend on yellow cars. Totally independent values. Also, another important property in nominal scale is there is no order between values. So, order is there. We can't say that blue color is higher than red color. They are totally independent different values. So, what are ordinal variables? As the name implies, those values has order but nominal does not have order but this has order sometimes we classify the values variables as mild moderate and severe so there's an order severe is higher than moderate moderate is higher than mild because of that they are not mutually exclusive, but nominal, they are mutually exclusive. They are not independent of each other. Not mutually exclusive. Variables that we measure, ordinal scales, we call them as ordinal variables. What are interval variables and ratio variables? I hope that you remember the difference between discrete and continuous variables. In both interval and ratio scales, difference between two values are meaningful. But in ordinal, it's not meaningful. For example, assume that we have a disease, a cancer patient who has severe pain. We can't say that severe is two times of moderate. We can't say like that. But in ratio and interval, we can say height height of 100 centimeters is two times of 50 centimeters so they have meaningful differences so what is the difference between interval and ratio interval variables do not have absolute zero no absolute zero what do you mean by absolute zero example is temperature Temperature in Celsius. 
What do you mean by Celsius zero? Celsius zero is a value. It's not absolute zero. It's not absence of values. As interval scale does not have absolute zero, we can't calculate ratios. Can't calculate ratios. So you can understand ratio scale, we can calculate ratios. Also, importantly, it has absolute zero. Absolute zero. Example, height zero means no height, weight zero, no weight. Another thing that we can identify is in interval scales, as the zero is not absolute, we can have negative values. If a variable has negative values and it is a continuous distribution, we can identify that as an interval variable. Now, you may have heard this first case but in the order of nominal ordinal interval ratio so why did i place in other way round because similar variable can be measured in different scales if that particular variable can be measured using ratio scale it is important to get the values of ratio scale than nominal scale so ratio scale produce higher statistical value than interval. Interval produce higher value than ordinal and nominal. I will give you an example. So think about height. If height measured in centimeters, it will be a ratio variable. If we measure height as shorter, shortest, shorter, average, taller, tallest. It is an ordinal scale, an ordinal variable. If we measure that as tall and short, we call that this kind of variables as binary variables because only two outcomes are there, tall and short, only two possibilities, so it is nominal. Single variable can appear as nominal, ratio and ordinal scale. Variables are the basics of learning statistics. If you understand variables clearly, this categorization clearly, it will be easier to proceed to the next lectures of statistics. We'll meet in the next lecture. Thank you very much.